All right, let's go into uh, this bowling alley, casino. Check it out. Okay, hold on a second. What does a casino bowling alley have to do with building a class of 81 arcade? Just hold on, wait, I'll get there. But first, this video is about how you build your own arcade cabinet. And the first thing you need to do is go to classicarcadecabinets.com and find the blueprint of the machine you want. So when I went there, I looked for the class of 81 blueprint, but guess what? They don't have one for a class of 81. So what did I do? I started with a Pac-Man blueprint, but I realized that Galaga's, Pac-Man's, Miss Pac-Man, class of 81's, they're all a little different, but the closest one would be a Miss Pac-Man. I downloaded the files for that machine and then used that blueprint as close as I could to get to a class of 81 arcade. Getting back to the Wildfire Casino, I knew that they had a class of 81 real arcade in their bowling alley casino. That's when I decided to go there, do some hands-on research, and quickly realize that, yep, there's subtle differences from the Miss Pac-Man to the class of 81. And the reason is that the class of 81 has a 25 inch monitor, which makes some of the back panel design a little bit different as the, the CRT goes deep into the arcade cabinet. So I had to make some adjustments of my own just by looking at the class of 81 arcade at this casino slash bowling alley. Now, once I was done and had my blueprints, the next step is to go to FedEx, Kinko's, whatever you wanna call it, and get your printouts made by them. They have large printers. You can get a three foot wide print sheet, two scale side panels of your, of your arcade blueprints. You can also get printouts of control panels and other items uh, in those files if you want. Once you have the measurements of the width and the height of those printouts, then you're gonna go to Home Depot and you're gonna get some eight by four sheets of wood and then you're gonna tell them to cut them on the saw to the width and height spec that you calculated from your printouts. That's gonna save you a lot of time and then when you get home, you're gonna take those printouts, you're gonna lay them on top of that sheet that they cut for you and then you're gonna use uh, most likely a jigsaw and cut the curves out for those side panels. You can also see that on these printouts, they show you where the blocking goes or the, the top panel, the bottom panel. Uh, pretty much these blueprints should guide you as to where you're gonna put the uh, cross member pieces for your arcade. Now, once you're done cutting all your pieces, including your kick plate, which uh, on the kick plate, you wanna make sure you cut a hole for your coin door and test that first. You can see in this video, uh, that I made sure that I used the correct coin door for a class of 81. It's a two door top uh, and bottom door uh, for that class of 81. It's not a single door technically. Now you'll notice on pieces like the kick plate, I put the artwork on first. Uh, I drill the holes or screw the holes in from the side outside of the side panels into the sides of the kick plate or the cross member pieces uh, just to make sure that I don't have any holes or, or screws that show from the front um, of those pieces. So it's nice and clean. And then once you get all those pieces done, you're gonna start attaching them to the side piece. And you can see here that once it's done, once all those pieces are together, put the other piece uh, on top, screw them into the sides, make sure you have your marquee uh, section complete, drop a light in there, and then we're pretty much good to go to the next steps. You can see in this example, I busted my marquee. I actually dropped it and I cracked it. I had to order a new one. That was pretty uh, painful to watch it slip out of my hands and hit the floor and, and break. Now, also the control panel will need to be done. I have a separate video on the control panel where I show you exactly how I built the control panel. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see that. Uh, it's a pretty good video, uh, actually a tough task to make that control panel. Um, without having one that you could get from eBay or uh, maybe uh, somewhere on Clove would have been a lot easier, but nobody had a class of 81. Now, I also uh, used the Unico Phoenix 25-inch monitor. I have a video on that. You can watch my review video on that. 
obviously disappointed in that. If you did see that video, there's a lot of problems with it. And I may actually have a follow up video coming soon, but that video will be in the link as well. Now, one of the problems with the Unico monitor was it was difficult to figure out how to mount. It doesn't come with any mounting hardware. So take a look at this video. This is where I show you um, what I did or how I mounted it inside the cab. Okay, guys, here's what I did for the bracket for placing the monitor in. You can see I got these side brackets in here. I put grooves here, right here. That's where the side, the, the horizontal brackets will run across. And the, the monitor will just lay right in there. So I left a little gap here, a little spacing here because the glass will go underneath there and gave it a little bit of spacing here for you know about an eighth inch inch worth of glass here plus a little monitor buffer so you know everything had to be drawn out lines make sure it's all even and let's uh, pop the monitor in and just see how it how it looks okay that thing dropped in really easily measured it well see it just dropped right in there and uh, this thing's huge I tell you it's pretty big so we'll have to get a piece of glass cut and I'm still working on the bezel okay next step is to paint it we're gonna quickly paint the inside black we don't have to do the whole cabinet we're only gonna do the parts that are showing then we're gonna do the laminate on each side I laminated both sides because the artwork goes on much easier when you laminate and I've done a video on that specifically on how to do it. I'll also leave a link in the description to that video on how you laminate in arcade. In this video, you get a quick look at how it's done, but basically just glue the laminate onto the side panels. And then you're going to take your router and you're going to route all the way around the cab. Uh, go slowly, make sure you get good cuts and make sure everything is smooth on top as well and flat uh, before you start routing. As you can see here, it comes out pretty good and it just makes putting the vinyl on so much easier. In this uh, arcade, you have one that's a sticker. So I got a nice black piece of laminate on one side, the Galaga side, and then we use a sticker for that side. The other side, Miss Pac-Man has full artwork in the blue. The last step I had to do was the uh, angle iron. I used angle iron to hold the marquee and it's not the proper uh, holding brackets for a class of 81, but it uh, works well and did the trick. You can see the unit uh, in all its glory here. Now here's where this cab gets unique, a kind of one, in a, one of a kind. When you look into the guts of this, you'll see kind of right there, you get a sneak peek that there's a Mr. Kate in here. Now there's also the real PCB right there, the class of 81, that's the red board. And then the green board here is a riddle switcher. I'm switching between a real PCB of class of 81 and a uh, Mr. Cade right there as well. So I switched between the two and I'll show you how that works in a second. Here you can see that that's the class of 81 PCB right there. And then on the second coin door, I actually put a button on it that you can switch to the Mr. Cade by pushing and holding that button for about one second and then it'll switch on over to the Mr. Cade. The reason for this, why did I add a Mr. Cade? Well, number one, I can get a lot more games on it, but Mr. doesn't have the class of 81 arcade ROM. It has so many games on it, especially ones that are four-way joystick and uh, one-button games. I actually went and cleaned out all the other ones, or at least most of them. I still have some more cleaning up to do, but you can see all these games from Miss Pac-Man to Mappy to Dig Dug, all these ones I still haven't gotten through um, all these other games that I have to go through and just pull out only the four-way joystick or two-way joysticks games, two-way joystick games and one-button games. Everything from, I don't know, Devil Fish to uh, Dorodon to Frogger to Egor. I mean, there are some crazy games on here that work perfectly with this system. It's definitely one of the best multicades that I've ever built. One of the uh, neat things on this is that I run the Mister through HDMI. I could run it through the JAMA Video Edge, but I run it through HDMI for one reason is because this this Phoenix Arcade Unico monitor uh, doesn't handle the the VGA too well um, from anything a, a PCB or the Mister. 
So, hey, that's it for this video. That's how I did it. Uh, leave a thumbs up and a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.